very, very warm welcome to everybody this afternoon. Lovely to see you here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God is love. And those who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. We begin our service this afternoon by singing our opening hymn, Lord of all hopefulness. God of wonder and joy, grace comes from you, and you alone are the source of life and love. Without you, we cannot please you. Without your love, our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, that we may worship you now with your thankful hearts and serve you always with willing minds. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation please be seated. together to witness the marriage of Philip and Sarah, to pray for God's blessing on them, to share their joy and to celebrate their love. Marriage is a gift of God in creation, through which husband and wife may know the grace of God. It is given that as man and woman grow together in love and trust, they shall be united with one another in heart, body and mind, as Christ is united with his bride, the church. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of sexual union and joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It is given as the foundation of family life in which each member of the family, in good times and in bad, may find strength, companionship and comfort and grow to maturity in love. Marriage is a way of life made holy by God and blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty which all should uphold and honour. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Philip and Sarah are now to enter into this way of life. They will each give their consent to the other and make solemn vows. And in token of this, they will give and receive rings. We pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfill God's purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. But first, I am required to ask anyone present who knows a reason in law why these persons may not lawfully marry to declare it now. <laughs> Deathly hush. That's what we like to hear. Deathly hush at this point. <laughs> Philip and Sarah, the vows you are about to take are to be made in the presence of God, who is judge of all and knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. <laughs> Philip, will you take Sarah to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Sarah, will you take Philip to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. As we sit, let us pray. God our Father, from the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessings upon Philip and Sarah that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, in holiness and commitment to one another. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 to sit down. Jennifer is going to come and read for us. Thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. 
30. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophecy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see what a poor reflection is in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Now it's my great pleasure <coughs> to invite Helen to come and give the address. Helen told me, as we were waiting for the bride, that you were her bridesmaid all those years ago. This is lovely that she can do the address at your wedding. <coughs> yes, I think we are all very happy to be here on this most special of occasions. For me, there are three main reasons. Firstly, I get to wear a new dress. <laughs> Not quite as beautiful as yours, then, Sarah. And then, as um, has been mentioned, Sarah was my bridesmaid when she was a little three-year-old. Bit of a tear away towards the end of the day. She got a little bit fed up, I think. We had to drag her back in for the photos. Um, but she was a great delight with her curly blonde hair. And here she is, grown up, happy, and has found herself a really lovely man who clearly supports her and cares for her. And the third main reason that I'm so happy to be here is that Philip and Sarah have chosen to get married. So let's think about that for a minute. Because after all, people don't have to get married, do they? I work and minister in the East End of London, and I have to say, it's, a, it's becoming a very um, rare institution. It's very hard to get people to even start to think about getting married. So when two people are committed to the idea of marriage, it should really make us stop and think. We can also stop and think about the nature of love today. That beautiful passage from 1 Corinthians, read so beautifully, takes us into a great mystery. It tells us that love, what love is really about, bears no resemblance to what is often referred to as love. And this kind of love Love that always puts the other person first. Love that is passionately at the heart of everything that we do and think and feel. Love that moves us. This is the kind of love that we aspire to in a marriage. Note the word aspire. Because none of us is there yet. We haven't arrived at 1 Corinthians 13. We are often still childish, as the passage says, in our ways, because most of us still have me, with a capital M, at the centre of our universe. But there are those who have journeyed a little closer to what true love is, not just in marriage, but in all their relationships with people. And we can all learn from them. This kind of love, eternal love, should be our hero, our goal, 
our destination. So Philip and Sarah sitting there so patiently, let's think about why marriage is special. I'm going to tell you a little story. It's not really hard to talk about yourself at somebody else's wedding, but just indulge me for a minute. I'm taking place in the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. And I'm not saying that to show off, because I absolutely have no talent at all. Unlike you, Sarah, I can't dance, I can't sing. There's not much that I can do, actually. I'm not even very tall. I'm, not, I'm really nothing special. And in the, in the opening ceremony, I'm just a kind of glorified scene shifter. They need thousands and thousands of people, and I'm just one of those thousands. But it's taken a huge amount of time, endless rehearsals, and sometimes it just feels that it's ruining my life. Why do I do it? It's to be part of something bigger. To be part of something amazing, exciting, once in a lifetime, show-stopping event. I should be one of around 40,000 volunteers, all doing very tiny things. My role is small, but I'm needed to do my bit, and I want to. The whole event is going to be a huge work of art, I hope and believe. Watch it, and then we can talk about it. <laughs> but I think it does, it's a good illustration of what marriage is all about. Because it makes you a part of something that is bigger than yourselves. Something spectacular and long-lasting, eternal even. A work of art. It's like a fast-moving stream, deep and wide, flowing from one age to another, joined by many thousands of people before you and after you. And you've become part of it, or you will do by the time you've left this building. Marriage is a covenant, a promise. It's a foundation, a creation, a work of art. It links one generation to another. It links families together and it creates new ones. In the Christian tradition, it's a holy estate, a place where God lives and moves and surrounds you. Kings and queens, however wonderful, don't go on forever. They will come and go. But marriage, that will endure. And for all those reasons, it is not entered into lightly. But Sarah and Philip, it's where you want to be. The big celebration, the stream of life, the eternal friendship. Okay, so there are some cynics amongst us. Marriage doesn't always work. It's not always wonderful. It can go wrong. I'm not just saying wonderful things about it because I have my head in the clouds. It can be misused. But what makes the difference between a good marriage and a bad one, of course, is the relationship at its heart. That's the important thing. It's the teamwork. As the Olympic opening ceremony and closing and all the others will only be a success if all the small people in it are committed and do the right thing and work with their team. At the heart of your marriage is love and commitment to one another. You've become a team. And you have that aspiration to love in the 1 Corinthians 13 way. All of us here, your family and your friends, are here to encourage you, to stand with you as you take this step. This church has opened its big doors to help you make the marriage holy. So as you take a deep breath, hold hands and jump into the stream together, be certain that God is with you, surrounding you, and will indeed bless your marriage to make it a wonderful one a work of art indeed. God bless you two for believing in marriage. I know this is a day of mixed emotions, of course it is. But Sarah and Philip, be happy on your big adventure. Allow your marriage to have God at the centre and you will learn to love 
in the way that passes the test of time. God bless you. Thank you very much, Helen. Now I sit down to sing, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.